So if you could just start with your name and title for the record. Okay. Um, good afternoon. My name is Justin Bamberg. I am an attorney with Lanier and Burroughs here in Orangeburg, South Carolina. Also state representative serving House District 90 in Bamberg, Barnwell, and Collison counties. I'd like to thank you for coming out today. Uh, the purpose of this uh, presser is to discuss a bit an incident that happened uh, not too long ago. In the early morning hours of June 12th, 2016, uh, there was a 911 call for a domestic disturbance at a residence here in Orangeburg County. Uh, a boyfriend and a girlfriend uh, got into it and of course the police were called. Uh, two Orangeburg County Sheriff's deputies arrived uh, shortly after the call, at which time they entered the residence and proceeded to speak with the boyfriend and the girlfriend. Uh, it's my understanding that the boyfriend was taking out, taken outside by the supervising officer, uh, who I understand to be an FTO, a field training officer. Uh, the new officer, who had not been with the department very long and was uncertified, stayed inside with the female. After obtaining her account of what happened, this officer then stepped outside, put the boyfriend in the vehicle, and proceeded to enter the residence, where he demanded that this young lady perform a sexual act on him in exchange for her boyfriend not going to jail. She, of course, pleaded with him and cried and informed the officer that her daughter was in the house, who was a minor, the officer then went to the bedroom, opened the door, peeked in, saw that the daughter was sleeping, and proceeded to again demand, if you don't do this sexual favor, I'm going to take you and your boyfriend to jail. He grabbed the female's arm, he grabbed his cuffs, and he proceeded to drag the woman back into her bedroom, where he forced her to her knees, unzipped his pants, and a sexual incident occurred, um, after which the officer left, uh, the boyfriend was let go, and upon entering the house, he finds his girlfriend crying, distraught, traumatized, uh, and tells her to call 911 to report what had just happened to her. This woman did report a sexual assault uh, sh very, very shortly after the officers left. Later that evening, an officer with the Orangeburg County Sheriff's Office did come to the scene and question her. The very next day, this officer was fired. It's my understanding that he did not deny that a sexual act took place. Uh, typically, what we will see in these situations is an officer will do one of two things. He will either completely deny that anything happened or he will to cover himself, say that it was a consensual act. Um, our position, of course, is the position of what happened. This officer uh, took advantage of this woman and he forced her to do something against her will under the threat of duress and arrest. Uh, and that should never happen. It should never happen with an officer who is charged with the task of protecting and serving. Uh, he took advantage of this woman. I must commend the Orangeburg County Sheriff's Office and their administrators for stepping in and immediately firing the officer. I must also commend them on immediately calling SLED so that SLED can independ uh, independently investigate this incident. There are multiple problems here. Outside of the fact that this woman was sexually assaulted in her home by an officer who had a gun, wore a badge, and wore a uniform, um, she was not treated as a victim. If it, was an, if it was not an officer that had been called um, and complained on for sexual assault and it was a regular individual in society, this woman would have been treated differently. She would have had her statement taken. She would have been sent or told to go to the hospital so that a sexual assault nurse examiner could perform a sexual assault test on her, which plays multiple roles. Number one, it preserves evidence evidence that can be used to confirm that something happened, evidence that can be used later in the prosecution of the perpetrator. Uh, none of that was done in this case. Uh, I take extreme issue with the fact that this lady was not offered any type of service or assistance or victim's advocate. Um, 
she literally had to sit there and wait and ponder and to this date has not yet um, had treatment. Um, I will let you know that um, unfortunately the, this lady has been so traumatized by what this officer did to her uh, that this weekend she did contemplate suicide. She put uh, a bunch of pills in her mouth at which point um, her boyfriend found her and talked with her and she spit the pills out. This is what happens when victims of sexual assaults and other severe crimes aren't afforded the opportunity to have their voice heard or to be treated as the victim that they are. <clears throat> the other aspect of this is this public policy concept of are our officers trained correctly? Are there proper procedures in place to ensure that things like this do not happen? As you all may be well aware, in the state of South Carolina, officers are required to be certified through the South Carolina Criminal Justice Academy. Uh, the law, which is right before me, uh, specifically says that no law enforcement officer employed or appointed after a date in 1989 uh, can operate with the powers to arrest or detain citizens or interact with citizens without being certified. This law, section 232340, contains an exception to that, and it allows South Carolina officers to be sworn in as police and operate as normal officers do without certification so long as during a period of one year they become certified. But there's one other requirement, and it is the only requirement placed on individuals before they are given what I will call man's ultimate power, and that is the power to deprive a citizen of their life their liberty or their freedom. And that requirement is that the officer be certified with his firearm. Most law enforcement officers, not just in South Carolina, but across the country, will never fire their service weapon. Many law enforcement officers will serve 20 or 30 years without firing their firearm. However, that is the only requirement, the only requirement placed on uncertified officers here in the state of South Carolina. That is something that I believe must change. The field training officer in this incident was the supervisor of this uncertified officer, of this new officer. Uh, he was going through a process of not only learning how to be a law enforcement officer, not only learning the policies and procedures of the Orangeburg County Sheriff's Office, but his character was also being examined. The way he dealt with individual citizens in our communities was being evaluated. But on the evening or the early morning of June 12, none of that happened. And why? Because the field training officer was outside while this uncertified officer, this new officer, was inside. It's my position that you cannot train, you cannot supervise, you cannot evaluate, nor can you critique the character or whether or not a person needs or possesses the traits required for law enforcement officers if you can't see what they're doing. Could this have been prevented? Absolutely. Um, again, this, this poor woman um, is traumatized. She relives these moments and I am thankful, not just for her, but for other women that she had the courage to stand up and report what happened to her. Uh, this is not uncommon. Uh, these things have happened at departments across South Carolina, across this country. Um, but all of them are not heard and all of these women are not given a voice. Uh, we saw this recently in Oklahoma where there was a serial rapist on the police force. Um, he targeted individuals um, like this woman, individuals who may be poor. Uh, this particular officer in Oklahoma targeted women who had extensive criminal records. Um, of course, my client does not have that. This officer in Oklahoma targeted women who had uh, habitual drug problems. Again, something that my client did not suffer from. And he targeted these type of women because he knew that they either would not step forward or if they did, their character would be in such question that no one would believe them. Well, this officer in Oklahoma was convicted on felony counts of sexual assault and other charges and sentenced to 263 years in prison. Um, at this point, uh, the subject officer 
uh, former officer with the Orangeburg County Sheriff's Office, um, has been terminated. The investigation has been turned over to SLED. SLED will follow their investigation and we look forward to the officer being charged and convicted with what he did. Of course, um, as is any defendant, regardless of what they do, uh, they are entitled to the constitutional protections of uh, and concepts of innocent until proven guilty. Um, but I believe the officer will be uh, convicted uh, at the very least of misconduct in office. Um, again, it's my understanding that uh, the act itself um, has not been denied. Um, this will likely be uh, a case of whether or not there was consent or not. Um, my client adamantly denies that she consented to this. Uh, this officer appeared at the home armed with his badge and his uniform and the power to take her or her boyfriend to jail. Um, and consent can never exist in a situation where an officer is responding to an active call for service and has power uh, and can use his power and the things available to him under state law against an individual. Um, I will inform you that um, my client will be seeking treatment. Um, she is uh, going to be receiving some therapy and counseling uh, here in Orangeburg from CASA Family Systems. Um, they work with abuse victims, with sexual assault victims. Um, and we're looking forward to, to her. This is gonna be a long, difficult road for her. Um, I can think of nothing more traumatic for um, not just a, a female, but an individual human being than to be forced uh, to do something sexual against your will. Um, it's even more traumatizing when the individual that does it uh, has a badge and a uniform. And the only person that you can call for help is also someone that has a badge and a uniform. Uh, so with that said, I will entertain any questions that you all may have. You mentioned that she didn't get any medical treatment right away, so I'd imagine evidence is lacking. How does that um, prevent or present an obstacle in this case? Uh, well, with regard to physical evidence that may have been contained on her person, um, it's very likely that any that was there is no longer there. Um, I am unaware as to what actions were taken uh, either by the Orangeburg County Sheriff's Office or SLED initially with regards to maybe uh, taking the officer's uniform or uh, you know, requesting his consent to perform uh, cotton swabs and, and things of that nature. Um, you know, it ends up becoming a situation where, um, you know, it's, it's her word versus his word. You look at the uh, information contained in the reports. I will let you know that I have reviewed the uh, initial incident report from the CDB call and there are some inconsistencies in that report that I think reflect on uh, or shine a little light on what exactly happened that night. Um, but it's a difficult road. These cases are always a difficult road, uh, which this regenerates this discussion of body cameras. Um, had this officer had a body camera, uh, we would know because it would be on film. It would also uh, persuade him to maybe not do what he did if he knew that his camera was on and if for some reason the complaint is made and there is no body cam video, well, that leads you to one conclusion. Um, so it's gonna be a difficult road. It will be a difficult road. I will tell you, I believe my client 100%. Um, you know, it also makes you wonder um, if this call came in early morning on June 12th, this officer was fired immediately. Um, there's a reason why. Yeah, isn't, I was gonna ask, that was gonna be my next question, isn't protocol just to place them on suspension until proven guilty? This is kind of surprising to me that they were fired right away. Um, it, it's, it's my belief that this officer, and my understanding that this officer was fired because he did not deny, um, in other words, he, he admitted that a sexual act had occurred. Well, um, he said he was there, sorry, go ahead. Was there an incident report filed on the incident that they were called to the house? And if so, have you seen that? The initial CDV call? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, there is an incident report for that. And there's no, I mean, there's no mention of? Um, well, that that is, there's no mention of the act occurring. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that is how we know, I know the names of the two officers involved. Um, I've refrained from mentioning those names because my clients are not aware of the identities, i.e. the names of the officers that arrived. They just know the description of them. Mm -hmm. um, 
and I don't want to put out inaccurate information that could potentially uh, damage the, the officer that did not do the act. Um, but of course, it, it's not going to be in, in the incident report. No, no, <laughs> no officer with a lick of common sense is going to say, I made a woman perform a sexual act on me and write it in a report. So the other officer isn't facing any charges, though, the one who was there while this was allegedly happening? Um, as far as I know right now, um, SLED is investigating the incident, including the, the alleged perpetrator. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what they look into, who they look at, and what steps they take during the course of an investigation is a question that is, is best answered by them. Um, I will say that um, depending what the perpetrator told other people or uh, what he did after the fact um, or what he may have mentioned, uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I look forward to the investigation continuing. And uh, if, 